Voting has begun. The choice is in front of the American people. Donald Trump and J.D. Vance or Kamala Harris and Tim Walz. I don't think this is a hard choice. I will be voting very early in Virginia for Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. But it's not just a choice of Donald Trump versus Kamala Harris. It is a choice between Donald Trump and his national security team and Kamala Harris and her national security team. We know at the end of the first Trump term, Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State, National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien, John Radcliffe, Director of National Intelligence, serious people, serious, serious people were in charge of the federal government and our national security. We suspect, we do not know, that Kamala Harris will be bringing along Phil Griffin and other people, Phil Cox, right, I think. I cannot actually recall the name of her national security advisor, but there are many troubling people in her wake, many people who lack actual experience in the guidance of national security affairs and about whom neither the Chinese nor the Iranians nor the Russians nor the Venezuelans nor any of our enemies are the least bit concerned. Our enemies are very afraid of Trump. I think that is the most important thing to understand. Trump deters China and Xi Jinping. Trump deters Putin. Trump scares the living daylights out of Iran. That's why Iran is trying to beat Trump, maybe assassinate Trump. They've said so on the latter, and that's been confirmed repeatedly. But we need deterrence back. We need the world to be stable again. And we need Donald Trump. Donald Trump's market policies also work. I want the Trump economy back, not the Biden-Harris economy. Don't want more inflation. Do not want a recession. Do not need more regulations. We want Americans to be free. We also know that between these two candidates, they're very radically different on the border. I believe in borders. I am myself a border hawk and a regularization dove. Almost everyone in the United States who has come in legally or illegally in Hugh Hewitt's world would get to stay unless they had a criminal record and an indication of violence or a background check otherwise led us to conclude we can't conclude or that they need to go. So the 50,000 Chinese nationals who entered the United States, I'm very leery of them. Very, very leery of them. The CCP is our world's greatest enemy. It still astonishes me. To this day, it astonishes me that in the first presidential debate, China was not discussed. It's like not discussing Japan had there been a uh, debate between FDR and Wendell Wilkie in 1940. Really, it's that bad. It was that bad. But I want you to focus even broader. When a president takes office, a new president, it's not just the president. They, and it's not just their national security team. They bring along 3,000 appointees. 3,000 people come to work with them. I trust Donald Trump's 3,000 people. Robert Lighthizer, his trade representative, Ashtabula, Ohio, fabulous trade representative. I trust him. I've mentioned Pompeo and, and Ratcliffe and Grinnell and uh, all the others that came along, Robert O'Brien. The 3,000 people Kamala Harris would bring along would be San Francisco, Oakland, Bay Area radicals. And I mean not liberal. I don't even mean le left wing. I mean radicals at the Department of Education deciding who gets money, at the Department of Education deciding who is going to be cracked down on campus and whether or not Jewish students will be protected. Uh, HHS, they're going to decide whether or not Title IX means that boys get to play in girls' sports, sports in high school. At every agency, and there are, we cannot even agree on the number of agencies that there are in the United States. There are around 160. As Justice Gorsuch wrote in his book, Overruled, this past summer, there are different counts of the number of agencies. We just don't know. But there will be at least 160 heads of agencies. There will be, each of them get to bring along a few appointees. There are many of them get to bring along many appointees at the Department of Defense and the Department of State, for example. The 3,000 matters actually more than the president and the vice president that 3,000 people are running the Department of State, the Department of Defense, 
the Department of the Treasury, the Department of Justice, which has been weaponized. The 3,000 appointees are running the FBI and the CIA and the NSA. The 3,000 appointees are deciding whether or not you are eligible or not eligible for whatever it is that you are seeking. The 3,000 people are executing the laws. It's the head of the executive branch. The elected person, whether it is Trump or Harris, will also bring along judges, scores and scores of judges, not necessarily a Supreme Court justice. There is no vacancy on the court at this point. But you are voting for radical judges if you vote for Kamala Harris. And we already had an infusion of radical judges, four years of radical judges under Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer. Now, I believe the Republicans will win the Senate majority, and they'll be able to stop onesies and twosies, but they can't do that repeatedly. It's not acceptable to do it repeatedly. You can only send back a few. So the Senate and the Senate may flip again because the map is very bad in 2026. If you elect Kamala Harris, you're really empowering an assault on the Constitution that is incredible. 